G'day guys. G'day guys and girls. It's Adam here, the Australian Aquarist. If you've been thinking about making a saltwater or marine tank like the ones behind me here, or an African cichlid tank, a Tanganyikan tank, a Malawi tank, and you're a bit put off by the cost of the aquascaping materials, the, the Texas holy rock or the dry rock, you may have even thought about making your own. Then stick around, because in this video, I'm going to show you how to make your own lightweight style aquarium rock and how to imitate those popular shapes you'll find in retail stores. I'm about to set up a 4,000 litre reef tank to house my, my spotted moray, as well as the inhabitants of this reef tank over here. And um, because it's 4,000 litres and 12 foot long, it needs a lot of rock. Um, there is live rock available in Australia. There's also the common uh, available base rocks or dry rocks, such as the, uh, the Marco or the Carib Sea. But um, I like to do things myself, so I thought I'd actually um, utilise some of the uh, recipes I've found on the internet and also on YouTube, and I'd make up my own uh, dry rock. I have done this once before, but today we've got a little bit of a difference. I've got a different ingredient to add to try and lighten the rock, as well as we're going to get stuck into building some of the commonly available shapes that you will find on the internet to purchase or in retail stores, such as the foundation rocks, the shelf rock, maybe some arches. So we'll go through the ingredients. We've got our off-white cement. I do have my hands on some basic beach sand, which I'm just going to use more for casting and modelling than actually as an ingredient. Um, I've got very, very fine shell grit or bird grit. In this tub down here, this is a tub which is left over from when I actually um, did, did rocks in the past. And inside here is a mixture of a coarser shell grit. I've got some old shells and some oyster shells and things here. And there's also plenty of actual salt in here from when we were doing some castings previously. Speaking of salt, I do have a bag of coarse, or as coarse as I could get, um, salt. I'll explain the reason for that. And different to some recipes I've seen previously, I'm actually going to include this product here. This product's perlite. And I use perlite a fair bit of my nursery business when I'm growing plants. Um, perlite's an expanded uh, mineral and it's uh, almost got the texture. You can see how it's white and very, very, very light. It almost blows away in the breeze. It's quite dusty when you first get out of the bag. It's very porous. It's almost got the, uh, the texture of a rice bubble. So it's very, very filled with air. Um, it will fill with water quite readily, which is the reason why it's used in the nursery industry. But it's very light. And I have seen some videos where you've actually, people have actually used um, a three to one ratio of cement and straight perlite to make a lightweight uh, concrete almost. So I'm going to use this in my mix um, to actually lighten the rocks and make them a lot, um, a lot more easier to attach to vertical surfaces in my aquarium. Shout out to Simple Aquariums, Lauren, I think her name is, um, another great Australian who's got a great video out there on YouTube about doing your own dry rock. So check that one out. Two parts perlite. Now I pre-moistened this perlite down just to try and reduce some of the dust. It's still a little bit dusty, so you need to be a little bit careful there. One part of the fine shell grit and one part of cement. Now I find it's important to actually give this mixture a good mix up in the tub before you add any water. I will add that I've seen um, recipes that have a ratio of up to four to one and even five to one of aggregate to cement. But because I'm using a fairly lightweight material such as the perlite, um, I want to use a somewhat higher ratio of cement. So that's why I'm using a three to one aggregate to cement. The proportionally larger amount of cement in the mix creates a bit more strength. So the ratio is three parts of aggregate, one part cement, one part water. All right, so you can see there the consistency. It's still loose but it's certainly sticking to my hand, but it's not running off like liquid. That's pretty important. You don't want it too runny because then you'll lose your air spaces, your porosity. 
and that's where the salt comes in the play. I want one part of salt for each of the three to one batches that I did. And when that rock that's made cures and goes hard, and we submerge that rock into, into the water, fresh water, to cure it or to leach out the excess hydroxides from the actual cement. What will also happen is the salt will dissolve. And the process of that salt dissolving into the fresh water, it's gonna leave space behind. And space inside that rock is gonna be pores within which water, microorganisms, and bacteria can flow through and in and colonize. Uh, the foundation rock is that uh, the rock that you might find which has got a very flat bottom and that's the rock that you'll put down on the base of your aquarium first um, and prevents any, uh, any point pressure on the actual glass below and with that stability you can lock in rocks or cement rocks coming up with your aquascaping and they won't just roll and tumble over so it's important to have a good foundation. Foundation rocks are traditionally built by cutting a rock such as that in half with a big saw and that's why you get the flat face but I feel we might be able to make some foundation rocks by aquascape or by using the rock mixture directly onto this plastic covered table right so that's that one uh, we might do a rock over here which is basically going to be um, three tiers that are actually touching the ground and then um, it's suspended up with more of a plate above it. So hopefully you can see here that I've actually created three pockets which have no sand and that allow the concrete mix to actually touch the table and get that flat surface. Um, and then I'll fill those up to the level of the sand and then bridge over the top with the actual mixture. Basically what we're doing is we're making concrete. So concrete is a mixture of sand, cement and aggregate and water. The only difference being we're changing the sand and aggregate and we're increasing the porosity. So the sand in normal concrete would be a river sand or a beach sand and the aggregates will be something like a blue metal or a, or a stone. In this case, we're using coral sands and we're using shell grits. Now we can start to come across the top of the beach sand and join the, the piers together. Again, notice how I'm actually sort of dribbling the mixture down from above. I don't want to compact it too much because that perlite itself is actually not soft but brittle. So potentially if um, I was to push down onto that mixture, I could compact that perlite just like you might squash a rice bubble. And um, that would actually, that would affect the porosity of the overall rock. So I don't want to do that. And I believe in over, overseas, Australian live rock is still available. I believe in the states there is some florida live rock uh, but it's becoming less and less available for conservation reasons so the hobby is relying more and more on either a man-made rock or a uh, terrestrially mined limestone rock such as the the marco rock or the texas holy rock the texas holy rock being a really common one for for you cichlid keepers out there now i don't keep cichlids anymore but if you're a cichlid keeper and you want to save a bit of money go to frenzyfishfeeds.com.au these guys were setting me up some fantastic samples here for us to go through. Let's check them out and see what kind of size will suit your cichlid needs. We go from our half to our one to our two millimetre pellets, our three, four and six millimetre pellets, up to our nine millimetre pellets. I think for most cichlid keepers, the three, two and one size would be ideal. Uh, the half millimetre being perfect for maybe some small fry that are starting to grow up. You can actually see the coloration difference here as well. The, um, the half, the one and the two have got that more of a reddish tone to it, which is because of the included astaxanthin, which will bring out those reds in your, in your fish. If you've got some big Central American cichlids, I think probably the, uh, the four, six and up to nine millimetre pellets would be perfect for those, those tank busters. And don't forget to include the discount code Aussie Aquarius to check out and you'll get 10% off your Frenzy Fish Feeds order. They're good options, 
but they can be expensive when you've got a large tank or you need a lot of rock. Righto, so this time what I want to do is try and make some shelf rock. And shelf rock is the rock, the sort of, the rock that you find, which is usually in fairly large slabs and it has those, those layers with almost air cavities that go between them. Just because I don't want the bottom of the rocks to be dead flat, so I've just raised them off the surface of the actual table itself. And again, I'm going to go for sort of a disc shape, like it's a plating Acropora coral. The same sort of coarse salt that I used to mix into the, the mix out there. And this is a complete experiment, so we'll see how we go. But I'm actually going to try and just do it in lines that go across the actual shape of the rock but not all the way across. If it goes all the way across, then it's going to be, that one's going to be separated by that one. So I want more of a, a maze, a maze style pattern. Now, if you think about it, these can be cavities that snails and crabs and small fish can hide in. So I've got my lines of salt, continuous or broken, and then I'm going to put more of this rock mixture on top. It's actually quite hard to know what's going to come out of this. So I'm just going to leave that now and we'll do another one over here. I'm just putting this salt layer in the inside of the boomerang or C shape. And what I'll do now is take my rock mixture, put it around the back and finally over the top. All right, I've got a bit of space here. I might see if I can make a, um, an arch, create a cavity. And that cavity can go all the way down to the, uh, the table if you wish or doesn't have to. And I'm going to create another cavity, build up the area in the middle. And what I'm simply going to do now is dribble my rock mixture into the first cavity, into the second cavity. And as I actually bring the mixture up higher and over this bridge, this bridge of sand and shell grit, and join it to this first blob of mixture, it'll actually create the arch. Obviously some of this sand and this shell grit will actually stick to the surface, which is fine. You can actually wash it off later on um, with a hose or an acid wash if it's really stuck. Or you can leave it on if you like the appearance of it. So I've got a little bit left in here, so I might just make a few more smaller sort of plating Acropora style pieces and um, we might call it a day. I've moistened the rock down with the, with the hose, just on a light mist. I've covered the, uh, the table over with a sheet and I've wetted that sheet down. And then I've folded this layer of plastic back over the top to keep the whole thing covered. Keep the humidity and the moisture inside and we're gonna leave this sit for a couple of days. So um, I'll see you in about two or three days and we'll pull it apart and see what the result is. So this is the outcome of my rock making efforts. Over here, I've got my, my foundation rock my shelf rock and my arches and because this was a little bit experimental in using that perlite i do have a tub here of medium-sized pieces and some smaller pieces of rock rubble where i just made some long skinny shapes that actually broke which i was kind of half expecting but that allowed me to have these smaller rock pieces that i could that I could glue corals to and fix into various places of the new aquarium. So that, that rock rubble will certainly come in handy. Now if you might remember, this piece here was the, that sort of triangular style um, foundation piece where I actually made three piers. And you can see the three piers there, and that's allowed to have that elevated rock style platform. Um, that's still very stable and foundation-like. I've actually done quite a few of these um, these foundation-style pieces because in the new aquarium, I'm actually going to have a um, a plywood back to it. But um, there's going to be plenty of scope in that in that plywood aquarium for Monster to actually use epoxy to glue. Um, a lot of this foundation rock, not only to the base, but also to the walls and the back to create a three-dimensional style to the aquarium. And you can see in the foundation rock how smooth and flat that base is, 
which will allow a really good adhesion to, to the plywood aquarium. Um, or in the case if you've got a normal style aquarium, a really good foundation, a really good solid base with good contact to the base of the aquarium. That's a particularly nice one there, I quite like that. So the arch rock, if you remember, actually was formed where I dug out a pit on, um, on one side in the, in the substrate, the sand or the shell grit, and a pit on the other side, and I mounded up that excess material in the middle, and then when I put the mixture from one pit to the other across the top, it formed that kind of arch type shape. Um, this arch, I must admit, is not a particularly large arch. I'm not a massive fan of arches myself. All you need to do is just make sure you build up that sand layer in the middle there to make much more of a, of a high pitched arch when you actually pour the mixture. So that's that one there. I actually actually like these, these rocks more like, more like that as opposed to that. I think that looks a lot more natural. It looks a lot more like a plating acropora or a montipora coming out. You can see I've actually used some salt to create that kind of swim through effect just there. I actually quite like, quite like it looking like that. The shelf rock that, that you'd be used to if you're familiar with, um, with Marco rock, for example, is a very, I almost think of it as a, a wily coyote and, coyote and roadrunner look, that kind of Arizona desert style where all the different layers of red cartoon rock are built up. Um, and that's the kind of style that you get if you use the Marco shelf rock. This is the result that I've come up with. So again, you can see it's not flat on there or there. So it's an irregular shape because I use sand on and shell grit around the base and over the top to make it um, irregular. Um, and then I use those layers of salt or, or sand that I could wash out or dissolve to create those, those cavities. Uh, the very largest one that I actually made, and you might recall that I actually um, did cross pieces of, of sand and striations inside of it to try and get that effect. I wouldn't say it was particularly successful. That's, that's this piece here, quite a large rock. Um, I think once I cure this rock properly in water, I think it'll open up a lot more. But at the moment, you can only just, you can only just see that there's the, the cavities there and there. And there's another one just over here so there is hollow sections inside of this which would benefit um, you know, crustaceans and snails and abalone and microorganisms, but I don't think it'd benefit fish, not at this stage anyway. Although you could use this much like the shelf rock in a, um, like you'd use for Marco, it's not gonna give you the same wily coyote and roadrunner effect if that's what you're looking for. Um, however, I'm not, I actually think that's a fantastic piece there. Uh, I actually think that this much better represents a dead Montipora or a Plating Acropora or a Turban area, um, which is of course what I'm trying to achieve. Uh, but this will give me a good head start into aquascaping the new 4,000 litre plywood aquarium for Monster in his new coral reef home. Thanks for watching guys. There is one more video to come in this one and the process will involve curing the rock underwater to leach out the excess hydroxides to reduce the pH excesses and, and shock that will come from the cement. And I'm gonna try something a little bit different to, to get a bit more life into this rock and convert it from being a dry dead rock into a live rock. And hopefully, I can convince Ian, the prawn trawler, well, Ian, the prawn trawler man, to give me a hand. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time on the Australian Aquarist.